when we look at the human design chart, when we look at the natal chart, what those things are, they are really devices for measuring um, positions of planets, stars in the sky. It's not who we are. It's what we get imprinted by. But how that information enters us, it enters us through a crystal. That is why you are not your gates and lines. You are not your centers. You are none of those things. You are not the planets. Those planets in those hexagrams communicate between each other. And in that way, they affect us. They can affect us by themselves or what we can be affected by is the communication between those planets. And so we have, um, I gave uh, just an example on the image that I posted and then people thought, I actually got a lot of these questions. People thought that there was some kind of a rule there when it comes to those planets, which is not the case at all. So we have a Venus in whatever, 34, and um, that can be translated as Venus in uh, Aries or Scorpio. I don't know exactly. Um, I don't have them all memorized. And um, what is happening with that position, we identify with that position, and that is not who we are. We are the crystals, we are the tone. Well, our body is the tone and our mind is the tone. These are the cores of personality consciousness and vehicle consciousness. And so what happens with this information, it enters us through the base. So all of this information, even if you on the surface have the exact same chart as somebody else, does not make you same people because you filter this information in different ways. So whatever gauge you have, in whatever center, in whatever constellation, sorry, planet, um, it gets filtered through your unique filtering. And so I'll give you an example in my case, and I'm not like, my story doesn't have to resonate with you. We are two completely different people. I get presented with an opportunity. The first place that opportunity gets in is my mind. The mind is the front runner always, and it always will be. But the thing is, it's not about putting the mind to, to sit on the bench while the game is going. It's about getting the mind to cooperate and to give the ball to um, another team member. To design. It's not that the member of an opposing team, they're playing for the same team. And so what happens with me in my process, and this is what I see constantly on a daily basis, I see an opportunity, I get an invitation, I get a, an idea, whatever. First, it gets into my mind and it gets filtered through my personality crystal, through my tone five. And what my tone five does, it's a very emotional, it's very pleasure seeking, it's very full of desire, full of excitement, it's adrenalized. And what happens is I get so excited about things, so excited. And sometimes if I say, yes, I will do this, I love it, I'm so into it, I start investigating, I go all over the place about whatever it is I'm interested in, I'm in love with it. And then I regret it. And then I regret it and then I let the other person down because I give up on, on whatever it is. So the point is that this tone five, it does its filtering. Great, I'm very excited, but I should not act on this straight away. Let's see what the, the other um, team member thinks about this. Let's give it over. The point is to be able to surrender this to the other side, to the body, to see what the body wants to do with it. And if the body wants to go with it, if the decision is unanimous, then you proceed with it, of course. And if things go wrong, so what? So what? You learn. For me, this is an, yeah, I am very emotional. I have two right-oriented variables. Emotional process is not predictable. I cannot wait for my wave before I have experienced anything, before I have experienced a thing. There is no such thing. I cannot predict the feeling. I cannot predict how I'm going to feel about something or somebody. It's impossible. That is why um, what I do when I give the ball to the other team player, that team player for me, in my case, is inner vision. And it's a delayed vision. And what I do with it, if 
by any chance I feel like going for it, I go for it and I see. I see in a delayed way. If your tone on design side, if your team member is a part of a splenic binary, what you do is you make sure that that um, opportunity, that that idea is safe and secure to proceed with before you do that. You don't do it based on intuition. When they talk about spleen and intuition, it's like people in whatever, 1700s, when they went to wars, they weren't like, oh, wait, we'll see. Uh, we don't have to strategize. We'll see. We're intuitive. We'll see what happens. No, they strategized. They looked at every possible angle. They looked at the patterns from the past and how they worked and what worked and what didn't. And then they brought them over into their future. And that is how the splenic binary will work. And so that's what the, the whole point is. It's not about the removing one, placing one on the higher throne than the other. They're equal. They are team members. It's just important that they play together, that they don't play against each other. Because as I said before in other videos, design can very easily play against the mind. And the the um, outcome can be as equally, as, as bad as the other way around. If you're all you're doing is acting on the impulses of your body and not listening that voice in your head that says, maybe that is not such a good thing to do. That is your mind. Don't be afraid of it. Get to know it because it's the, the best thing about us. It's what makes us different than any other species.